everyone, it's Amy from Beyond Motion and today we're going through a back series. So if your back is really tight or you feel like you're always in your traps, it's important to make sure that the upper shoulder girdle and your mid and upper thoracic spine um, is not only loose and flexible, but also the muscles are really strong as well. A lot of what we see from our athletes and from people who are at a desk all day long or just driving in a car very often is a forward posture position like this even sometimes with the head pulled forward. What we want to make sure that we're doing is opening up the chest and shoulders and bringing the head back into alignment. So in order to do that, we have to make sure we're working through the right place and not always engaging the trapezius, but really working more into the lats and the teres and serratus and also really opening up that mid and upper thoracic spine. So today I'm going to give you some exercises to do and you want to do these in order. Now I'm going to show you the first group of exercises using some gliding discs but two paper plates will work just as well. You just want to make sure that you're on a flat floor, either a really low pile carpet, um, avoid tile unless you have a mat that you're on, but it might not glide very easily over a tile floor if it's very raised. So we're going to start on our belly. <coughs> and the first thing we're going to do is protraction and retraction, meaning working to get the shoulders up to the ears and moving away. So we're going to start with both arms on the floor, on the disc, or on the paper plate. You want the top of the feet on the floor. You want your hips pressing into the floor and your belly button to lift away. So notice my low back. If I let go of all of that, you see the deep curvature in my lumbar spine. But the minute I pull the belly button up, engaging the abdominals, pressing the hips into the floor, and press the feet into the floor, there's more length in my lumbar spine. The head and neck should be level a couple of inches off the floor. And the first thing you want to do is press the disc or the plate forward, then notice your shoulders going to your ears. As you exhale, you want to feel the shoulder blades slide into your back pockets. I'm going to do that again three more times. So inhale and exhale. Each time you do this, you're looking to increase the range of motion without allowing anything else to move in your body. And then we can try it with just one arm. Inhale, reaching forward and exhale back. And if you play a single-sided sport like tennis or pickleball, lacrosse, baseball, softball, <clears throat> you'll notice right away if you're tighter or weaker or more flexible for that matter on one side versus the other. And now for the other side, keeping the neck nice and long, shoulder blades back and down, abdominals are tight and again the hips are pressing into the floor. And you can notice that I have a greater range of motion on one side on my right side than I do on the left. The next thing we're going to do is go into a position called extension. So you want to make sure that again you're creating length in your low back and the abdominals stay nice and tight. The shoulders are away from the ears. So I'm going to pull the shoulders back and down on top of the ribs, keeping my core tight and the feet pressed to the floor. And I'm going to inhale through my nose as I start peeling my chest up off the floor. And I want to stop at the point where I feel the core nice and tight and the mid and upper back going to work, but I don't want to feel the low back down near the waistband pinch or, or cinch up. So I want that length. So I'm going to inhale and peel up and exhale to come back down. Now if you notice the head position, the eyes will scan the space. So we're directly down to slightly in front to however high your body is and then all the way back down again. You can add on to this exercise by peeling up, opening the arms out to the side, maintaining that upper back position, and then lowering back down to the front. Sliding up, keeping the feet on the floor, the belly is nice and tight, the neck is long, and then to reverse, we'd slide forward, open out, lifting up, and coming back in. As you can see, my shoulders and, and back are going to work here. The next position we're going to go into is a swimming position from Pilates and we're going to use just the upper body to begin. So to start you want to make sure your shoulders are back and down, your hips are again to the floor, belly is to your spine, back is nice and long, feet are down, and you're going to lift the right arm and lower it back down. Now you want to make sure that the hips stay pressed equally into the floor and that you're not up here moving this way or bending the elbow. You want the shoulder down and you want to feel a nice range of motion coming from up underneath the armpit out to your little finger. And then we'll do the other side. 
And again, notice if you have one side working more or more flexible than the other. You should not feel this gripping up in your neck area. Once you've done the arms individually, you can alternate them. Again, keeping navel to spine and hips down. Inhale to prepare, exhale to come into that slight extension again, lifting up off the floor and moving just through the arms, maintaining straight elbows and shoulders down. So the breathing would be inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. And obviously you can see the upper back and shoulders girdle going to work. From this point, I'm going to switch to the lower body. I can press the hands into the floor and bring my forehead down, which will create more length in the neck and allow me to breathe easily. <clears throat> I'm going to take the pubic bone and press the hips and the pubic bone into the floor as I lift the belly off the floor. I'll flex or dorsiflex the right foot and lift up. So the front of the hip presses into the floor, but now the hamstring and glute have to go to work, maintaining a stable pelvis all the way through. And I'll do anywhere from 8 to 20 on the right side and then switch and reposition to the left. Again, keeping the belly nice and tight, the hips pressing into the floor. And I feel the hamstring and glute firing. I also feel the low back going to work. Nice and stable through the hips and the belly is nice and tight. Again, repeating anywhere from 8 to 20 on the other side. From here, we'll alternate both. So again, belly to spine, hips press into the floor. I'm going to point or plantar flex the feet this time and lift them both up. I'm gonna alternate, and again, keeping the head down to relax the head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. So there's no strain in the back and no shifting through the hips and the knees stay nice and straight. And then I'll bring both up and both down. From here, I'll extend the arms and go into the full position. So the full Pilates swimming variation. The breathing is an inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Neck and shoulders are relaxed and knees and elbows are nice and straight. So I'm going to inhale, prepare. Come up into a slight bit of extension with the upper body and lift the lower body as well. And alternating, inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Maintaining a nice straight line with the elbows and the knees remaining straight and making sure that the body doesn't rock. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale, inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale, and release. Now, whenever you go into extension, you always want to end into some sort of flexion position. I'm gonna bring you back into a shell stretch or child's pose to release your low back. And come from there. So whenever you're looking to get into these positions, always make sure that your core remains really tight. And you've heard me say lift your belly button up off the floor and press the front of the hip bones into the floor to maintain that length in the spine. Depending on if you have a back injury, that's really, really important to note where you're feeling the movement. All of these movements should be, should be felt from your mid and upper thoracic spine, not just in your lumbar. So if you're feeling it just along the waistband, any sort of cinching or pinching feeling, know that either your abdominals are not engaged enough or perhaps you're coming up too high either the front half or the lower half of the body. So you can repeat each one of these exercises like I said anywhere from 8 to about 20 times making sure each time to check in with yourself and that your neck and shoulders are nice and relaxed. And like I said in the very beginning, if you have um, paper plates, you can use those instead of a gliding disc, but allow something to slide on the floor to get into that first protraction retraction. Try these exercises at the very beginning of your workout and leave a comment below. Let us know how they're working for you. Thanks for tuning in and watch for the next video. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.